Hey everybody, this is Bill from Music School Central and welcome to this video about 10 music school tips. These 10 tips are specifically about helping you get accepted into colleges. And these 10 tips are amazing tips. You won't find them anywhere else on the internet, anywhere else online, not even on my website. Uh, they're based on time-tested strategies that I have personally used for many years helping students get accepted. So I can tell you that you're in for a real treat, that these are 10 amazing tips you can't find anywhere else. Before we get started, this is actually my first YouTube, uh, YouTube video ever for this YouTube channel. So if you like this kind of content and you want to see more like it, please smash the likes and subscribe. If enough people like this and view it and subscribe it, I'll make more videos about music schools, how to get accepted, uh, scholarships, everything in this process, right? So let's dive in today to this video and talk about 10 amazing music school tips to help you get accepted. And the first tip is really important. It's a big mistake I see from a lot of students. So you really wanna pay attention to this one. And that is that your common application main essay needs to be more than just about a general love of music. So let me talk more about this. When you do the common application for colleges, you're going to be encountered with an essay prompt. You're actually going to be encountered with multiple essay prompts, but one of the essay prompts asks you specifically, talk about a background, uh, something in your background, an interest and experience, that is really important to you and your application would be incomplete without it. And many students rightfully choose music and you can talk about music and I even encourage you to talk about music most of the time here, but it has to be greater than just a generalized love of music. If you approach the essay like this, oh, I love music, I've always loved music, it's a big part of who I am. Jeez, I love music. That's just gonna go right to the less good essay pile, right? Maybe to the rejection pile. I guarantee you, most of the students applying to the common app music programs like USC or Michigan or a Miami or an NYU, when they answer this question, they're gonna be talking about music in a generalized way, but what you want to do is you wanna talk about music in a more specific way. You want to zoom in on a time period, an event, a person, something that has really shaped you and your understanding of music or just had a really big impact in your life, right? Some aspect of music that you can zoom in on and talk about is way more powerful than just a generalized love of music. And that can really help you stand out against other music applicants to these schools. So the second tip I have, and I'm just gonna look over to my notes here, is meet professors before you apply. Meeting professors before applying it's an old time tested practice and it's called trial lessons. So in a trial lesson, you sit down with a faculty member one on one from a school and you have a lesson with them, just as if you're having a lesson with your private teacher, except it's a lesson with a college faculty member. And this accomplishes a lot of things. One, it accomplishes for you Maybe this is somebody you like to work with and you can get a feel for the teacher and the school through the trial lesson. And this is very important as you want to find the right fit school for you. So having a lesson with a, a faculty member can help you figure out, is this somebody I want to work with? Does their philosophy work well with mine? Do I just feel good around them? That's very important too, to feel good around your teacher. So taking trial lessons can be hugely powerful. Can they help you actually get accepted? Look, most music schools will tell you because they have to. 
that they don't help you get accepted, that they're just these objective once, you know, one time lessons that don't mean anything. I can tell you that they may help you get accepted. It's not a guarantee for admission, but meeting a trial, uh, meeting a faculty member for a trial lesson can be hugely helpful, even if it's not just for getting accepted, but for helping you feel if the school is right for you. Now let's go to the third tip. And the third tip is about your pre-screen recordings and how they should be recorded on landscape mode. So let's back up for a second. Pre-screen recordings are recordings that you send to a school and it's like your golden ticket to receiving audition invitations to a school. So if you submit a pre-screen recording for a school, if they require it, they then look at your pre-screen and they say, okay, is this somebody who's worthy of a live audition with us? And they take a certain number of people who submitted a pre-screen recording uh, into their program. So when you do your pre-screen recording, if you use your phone, it's got to be on landscape mode. And when I mean landscape mode, it's the mode like this, as opposed to portrait mode. Portrait mode is when you hold your phone uh, the normal way, like this, right? But if you record your pre-screens like this, it's gonna look weird. It's gonna look um, not natural for a few reasons. One, if you're playing with other musicians in your recording, such as accompanists, you're not gonna see the accompanists if it's not in a wide angle view. And the other thing is that it just looks weird. So if you watch television, your TV is not shaped like this, it's shaped like a rectangle, like a hamburger, right? We're naturally more inclined to watch things, especially for a longer period of time when they are in the landscape mode. So if you record your pre-screens with a phone, it should be on landscape mode. Now, I have not always recommended recording pre-screens on your phone. You can use professional videography. I've had many students do that successfully. These days, the iPhones are so good that you can get away with doing it on your iPhone if your iPhone or, or, or equivalent phone is within the last three years or so, right? In terms of when it was made. Because the technology has become amazing on iPhones. So I have had students do both professional videography and iPhones, been successful with both ways. So the fourth tip is be specific in your college interviews. Now let's say you're asked a classic question in your college interview, which is why are you interested in us? So let's, let's go a little deeper. Let's picture ourselves in a school interview. You're interviewing for Berkeley College of Music based in Boston. Berkeley is a school where every student who applies has to do an interview. And you're sitting in Berkeley, in Boston, and you are asked, so why are you interested in Berkeley? And you look at the interviewer and you say, well, I just love Boston. I think it's an awesome city and I love music here. In their mind, they're gonna be saying next, right? Because you don't want to be giving a generic answer to the question of why us? You want to give a specific answer. So let's go back to that same interview. You're interviewing for Berkeley. They ask you why us? Maybe you're a pop singer and they ask you why us? You can say Berkeley is one of the few undergraduate programs in the US that offers a popular music curriculum. And because of that, I'm very interested in applying as I want to study popular music. Okay, perfect, right? You mentioned something specific about the curriculum and why it fits you specifically. That's way better than talking about why Boston is so great or why you like to be in an East Coast city or some vain detail that's not pertinent necessarily to the education that you're gonna get at the school. So you want to be specific in your college interviews, especially when they ask you, why are you interested in us? The next tip is understand your artistic choices. You're a performer. Why did you phrase something in a very specific way that you did? And don't tell me because your teacher told you to do that, right? You have to understand 
why you made an artistic choice. If you're a composer, why did you write that harmony and not any other harmony? If you're a jazz musician, why did you use those chord substitutions uh, versus playing what was on the paper, right? If you are a musical theater artist, what happened in the moment before the monologue you're speaking right now? That concept of the moment before is very important in musical theater. Whatever your instrument, whatever your major, you need to have an understanding of your artistic choices. Whether they're right or wrong, understanding your choices and being intent with them really goes a long way in making your musicianship better. Look, in your auditions, they may not say to you, oh, why did you play measure seven like that? But they can hear when you make a very specific intention and it just makes you a better musician when you do that and your audition is naturally going to be that much better when you have specific intention behind your music. And by the way, if you're a composer in your interview for composition, they may actually look at your score and say, why did you do this? And you should have an answer. Uh, the next one is music theory matters. That's the next tip. So let's say you're in your audition, right? And you just had an, you just sang through your piece or performed your piece exceptionally well. And they say, great job. By the way, were the notes of a D flat dominant seventh chord. And you start to sweat and you start to panic because you don't know what the notes of a D flat dominant seventh chord are, right? And then your dinged audition points and your audition did not go as well as it could have. And, and maybe some other kid who played really well did know it and maybe they got accepted, right? Music theory does matter. So when you're in your college audition and they say to you, what are the notes of a D flat dominant seventh chord? You should say D flat, F, A flat, and the last note is C flat and not B, right? If you know your music theory, you know that the last note of that chord is C flat and not B, even though it's the, the same key um, on the piano, right? It's different. So understanding your music theory, at least at the basic level, chords, scales, triads, seventh chords, time signatures, modes, that a major minor that's very important uh, when you do your auditions even if they don't ask you any theory questions in your auditions i have found that students who know theory just tend to be way better at music than those who don't know their theory as well and that can be a great investment of your time to learn theory to make you a better musician which incidentally will make you better at your auditions so then the next tip is fall in love. Now, let me explain by what I mean when I say fall in love. You want to fall in love with the audition repertoire you pick for colleges. So I can just tell you from experience, having worked with so many students, you show me a piece you play well that you don't like, and you show me a piece that you play well that you love, every single time you're going to play the piece you love so much better than the piece that you didn't like even if you played it technically correct this isn't easily explainable by me by a professor by a teacher by anyone it's just how it is when you fall in love with a piece of music you just play it better it just comes out of you better you're just able to make better choices about it you fall in love with it it really makes your audition so much better. Now, with every instrument, there's going to be some pieces that are not audition appropriate. And that's something to watch out for. You may love a piece that's not audition appropriate. However, if it fits within the guidelines and you love it, generally, it's going to be a good piece for auditions. Now, let's go to the next tip, which is wide nets. Let's talk about what wide nets are. Music school is very competitive. Most music programs have an acceptance rate of less than 20%. Some of the most uh, selective schools, like Cincinnati's musical theater program, Carnegie Mellon's musical theater program, they have an acceptance rate of 3%. That's twice as selective as Juilliard. That's twice as selective as Harvard. 
So when we are applying to colleges for music, we really need to cast a wide net. If you're any music major but musical theater, you should apply to seven to 10 schools. And if you're musical theater, only because musical theater is the most competitive, you should apply to 12 to 15 schools. The reason you wanna do this is one, you're gonna have a higher chance of acceptance at multiple schools and you'll have more offers. And the second thing is, is you're more likely to get scholarships. It's just simple mathematics. You apply to five schools or you apply to 10 schools. If you apply to 10 schools, you're twice as likely to get a scholarship from at least one of the schools than if you apply to five schools. Just simple arithmetic, right? So that's tip eight. Tip number nine. Oh, this is really important. This is one I see so many people uh, mess up. Don't judge a school by its website. Look, music schools spend thousands of dollars, so much money on the appearance of their website as it is designed to make you fall in love with it. Music schools are should spend a lot of money on their websites. They need to present themselves well. It needs to be professional. It needs to be clear. It needs to be, you know, uh, easily, uh, you should be able to navigate it easily, right? The problem is that that's sometimes all a family has in their research process. And just a website does not tell you the story about a school. It doesn't tell you its feeling, its environment, its people, its faculty. It may tell you a, about the curriculum, but it's not quite the same as going to visit a school and sitting in on a class or a trial lesson. So don't judge a school by its website. They're designed to make you fall in love with it. Rather, the website is just one tool in your arsenal uh, when you're evaluating a school to see if it's the right fit school for you. And that's the most important thing, by the way, is not necessarily getting into the most prestigious school. It's getting into that right fit school for you specifically. So then we go on to the 10th and final tip you want to approach college admissions holistically. Many people believe that the entire thing that gets you into music schools is auditions or your resume or something like that. Look, those are both really important and they need to be treated with high level of importance, but there's a lot of things that go into getting you accepted. There's your auditions, there's your interviews, there's your essays, there's your common application, there's the supplementary music applications, there's the pre-screen recording, there's your resume or your CV. There's so many things that go into this. There's also, how are you gonna plan out your summers before you apply to college or trial lessons? So many things can help you get accepted and you want to treat everything with a high degree of importance because that's how they're going to be evaluating you. They evaluate you on your audition and they evaluate you on all these other things too. Think about it. If a school is only going to accept four flutists in a year, and that's, that's common, that's actually common to only accept a small number of students in a given instrument. And five of the students play exceptionally well but four of them interviewed really well, were much more personal, had better resume and essays. Who do you think they're gonna pick, right? So it's really bigger than just one thing. It's a holistic approach to getting accepted. Now that concludes my 10 tips. I hope you enjoyed them. They are extremely valuable tips. And if you implement these, you'll, you, you could do very well in this process. So before we go, this was my very first YouTube video ever. And if you like this kind of content, please subscribe, please smash the likes. That will tell me that you guys really like this content and that I should make more like it about music schools, acceptances, scholarships, how to get in, how to find your right fit list of schools, all these things that are very important. So thanks for watching and you'll be hearing from me soon.